Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, continuing with the Silver Wolf series. In this recent video I did about walking sticks and having Moses sticks and hiking staffs and things like that, I got a lot of really good response and a lot of people wanted me to go a little bit further. So let's talk about getting a staff for the outdoors. Now, many of you have walking sticks just like that. This one was made for me by a good friend of mine, uh, Larry Shaw. And what it is, it's just a, a knot off of a tree that he made up to look like an English burl. Okay? And they fit just fine for down here for a walking stick at home. Many of us do have to use walking sticks from time to time. With my arthritis, occasionally I will have spells of arthritis where I just can't seem to walk well and I need that third stick and so walking into a store or something like that or etc something small and handy like this for just a little bit of you know I'm okay when I'm going but when I come to a stop I need something I can kind of put out like a kickstand and lean off of take the weight off that hip or whatever and when that happens these short sticks are fine but these are not really ideal for taking to the field and I and let me tell you why they're too short because when we're in town, we're walking on level ground. Stores, buildings, homes, sidewalks are relatively level. Yeah, there'll be a little bit up or down here or there, but they're relatively level. When we get out in the field, that is not true. There's gonna be dips and stuff like that where this stick is just simply too short. And so when we go to step and suddenly that hole is three inches deeper than we expected and suddenly it's too short. See what I'm saying? And so we need something with a little bit more reach. And that's where the hiking staff comes in. Now, as I said in my other one, I want mine about eye level. Many of you said taller. That's perfectly viable. You know, this one is one that was also made by my good friend Larry Shaw for use at rendezvous in living histories because I wanted something to walk around with for a walking stick that was about center of my chest, prop up level etc. And it gave me a little bit of balance initiative out there to be able to walk with it. At the same time, it was very handy because I was quite a, I was a dog soldier. I'm in charge of a lot of things. I'm trying to talk to crowds. And so having a pointer that I can indicate with, something I can hold and go whoop, hold it, and stop people from moving or doing or protect them from some unseen obstacle. That's what this longer stick would be. And this is about the length I'd recommend. If you're used to walking with a standard walking stick, get a longer stick, something about the middle of your chest for that uneven ground so that you can put it further down and still have a usable height so it's not too far down because you're trying to go downhill stepping down. If I'm going downhill, this stick definitely needs to be a little bit longer for me to reach. And so being able to put it out here in front of me like a kickstand, like this coming down the hill, being able to put it and help me come down on uneven steep terrain coming down. See, I want that length. If I tried to do it, sorry for the wind, with a shorter stick, I don't, I'm bending way over now, see, to try to reach. So the longer stick keeps me more upright and more balanced. Now many of you are familiar with this. This is a shepherd's hook type. This is actually a commercially made cane, but there is an entire type of martial arts called Korean fighting cane that's more in the line of something like this. And this hook is more open and it comes to a point and it's got hand grips down here and it's used for self-defense as a weapon to be used to defend yourself meant for older people that are trying to fight somebody younger and stronger having a good hard hickory whack that you've got an advantage to hook and pull that type of Korean martial art is very popular and so a fighting cane may suit for a field cane it being longer than a standard cane. Now for you. How do I get one of them, Blackie? Well, 
let me tell you, down and dirty. Instead of going and buying a Korean fighting cane, go look at Tractor Supply, go look at Menards, go look at these places that specializes in veterinary and herding stuff and get an actual shepherd's hook. Now it's gonna be a little bit bigger than this. It's, instead of being this way, it's gonna be about that much wider than this. And this hook is gonna come more straight down. Why did they call it a shepherd's hook? Because it was used by shepherds herding goats, sheep, lambs, stuff like that, because this hook is so you can reach out and hook a leg. You could reach down and hook a leg, hook under the throat of something to hold it back, to keep it from going through a gate, or to take and push and prod it, to take, and these are often sharpened to a point here, so you could go across and hook in and to pull an animal that's jamming up a chute or something like that to get them to come with you. Also works real good for grabbing grandkids, reaching out and saying, whoop boy, I told you not to go that way. Being able to hook a grandchild around the waist with that and hold on to them. I said we wait till the light changes, we don't run across the road, remember? Things like that. You know what it is to be a grandparent. So, but when you go find one of these shepherd's hooks, and they're gonna be somewhere around 20 bucks or less. I've seen them for like 10, 15, but it may vary where you're at. Okay, they're about this tall, and I'm five foot ten. It, so it's meant to be this tall a hook. You then cut it to length. Now let's talk about this right here. I recommend you have some sort of rubber stopper on the end of your cane. Why? You notice on these, there is not one, because I was using this in living history. The problem with that is that gets slick, that gets rounded off. And so when I go to push down, it may take off. See, I want something to grip. So when I put it down on that rock, that stump, that root, etc., I want it to have a little bit of grip so that whenever I push against it, it don't just slide off. And that's what this rubber does. It bites in. As you can see when I take my finger, it flexes. Replace these every couple of years. Once they start getting hard, and they will over time, the rubber kind of dries out. And see how that one's done cracked? Time to replace this one. They're not that expensive. Just put another tip on it. Okay? And you can get different size tips. So if you've got a tall stick like this or a short hook like this, go ahead and put those tips on. They are not being sissified to do it. It makes a lot of sense. It gives you grip, even out in the dirt. It gives you grip on rocks, stumps, slick things. Things I gotta push against with it. This is a tool, one of the most ancient tools we got, a stick. If I bet you if we ever get a time machine and we get to go back, one of the first things they ever found early man using is going to be a stick because it had so many uses. I can use this to push something away from me that I don't want. I can move that spider web out of the way. And there are a lot of times a stick, a hiking stick, is just invaluable for that, especially in September, which some of my Native American ancestors called the time of spiders because that's when it's coming to the fall and the spiders are dying. And they're putting up their webs for that last bit, you know, and you're coming through the woods and that's when you just seem to hit spider webs all the time, at least down here. Having something like this I can put out here in front of me and move that web out of the way, just lift it up so I can go under it or whatever. Or grab that limb right there, reach up and knock something out of a tree. It's just so handy, see? And so the walking stick, our first tool, is really still as viable today as it was a million years ago. But we have an advantage today because we can get these little modern additions in it to help us. Now, I have seen it done with these for a field cane, okay, of putting a rubber tip on it and then putting a nail right in the middle of it and leaving that nail sticking up just about an eighth of an inch. So on dirt and stuff, when I push it down, that nail digs in. And the edge around here will dig on a hard rock or something. Yeah, that tip won't. But the fact of the matter is the side will grip then. And so that kind of makes it a little bit better, especially when I'm trying to push down and it bite. 
I need it to grip because I'm about to put my weight on it to shift to step over this or step across this or whatever. That's another thing that I like a longer stick for is whenever I'm trying to step across something, being able to reach out there and stick it and then hold on it as I step across, you know, and it not be down in a hole. I want it up here so I can get a hold of it. I'm not going to pole vault. I'm too old to go over four-strand barbed wire fences anymore one and I did that when I was young. I had a big old walking stick and I just get me a good healthy step or two up my pole vault over a four-strand barbed wire fence and bring that thing over. And then my grandmama was saying, boy, you're going to end up on that wire. Of course I did at least once or twice, but then again I went over it 500 times. So heck, you know, Murphy's Law. But the thing about it is, is we can survive a lot better and thrive a lot better out here with a stick. So, in conclusion, I recommend if you're going, if you're somebody who has to walk with a stick, modern one or whatever, I recommend you check out Tractor Supply, Veterinary Supplies, Maynard's, uh, Menard, excuse me, or whatever you want to call it. And look for some place that handles for farmers for dealing with livestock. Farmers Co-op may very well have these. And tell them you're looking for a shepherd's hook. An actual wooden hard hickory factory made like this shepherd's hook. And then cut it to your length that you need. Put you a stopper on the bottom of it and maybe put you a nail like I talked about. You ain't got to, but see if that helps. And have yourself a walking stick that works in the field. Yes, the short ones. I know several people say, well, how about using the short ones? The short ones are fine on level ground. But when the ground stops being level and you've got to cross a deeper hole, or you've got to put it down in a hole, what was, you know, me standing flat foot and holding it shoulder length, now i got to do this to reach the bottom of the hole. And that makes me kind of wobbly as opposed to something up here that I can reach down in the hole and put my weight on to step across, you see, to help me get to the other side of that fence to get around that obstacle or whatever makes a difference. Hope you've enjoyed this, guys, and thank you so much for all the support you've given me. And if you don't mind, if you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button below and throw me a comment in there to help build up my algorithm and spread the message a little bit. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.